do supermassive black holes come from? Do stars live and die like us? What will happen when our sun dies? Will it turn into a black hole? What will your fate be if you happen to fall into a black hole? Come along with me on a breathtaking journey to understand the amazing history of the universe and to explore some of the most intriguing places of the cosmos, right from the massive supernova to black holes and beyond. Welcome to the second episode of The Grand Cosmic Story. Are you curious about the world around you? Do you wonder what else is out there beyond our world? Dr. Lata Christie, a scientist and an author, will take you on a journey through the universe. Join her in exploring the universe through her web series, The Grand Cosmic Story. Stay tuned to find out what today's episode is all about. In this vast cosmic ocean, each and every tiny bit of light that you see is a huge galaxy. If you could ask each galaxy to write its autobiography, it will write the story of the birth and the death of the billions of stars within it. Yes, stars and galaxies live and die just like us. But who is in control of this cosmic game? What is driving the birth and the death of stars. It is gravity. It's the same gravity that helps you to land on the ground when you jump up instead of floating off into space. Gravity's pull on an object decreases with distance and increases with mass. That is why we are orbiting round the sun and the moon is orbiting round us and not the other way around. When gravity acted upon the early universe which consists of gas, mostly hydrogen, they turned into stars and galaxies over time. How do we know that? Scientists learn the story of the stars and galaxies by peering into the sky observing bright objects day and night through sophisticated telescopes. They found that stars form when an extremely cold molecular cloud of dust and gas clump together because of gravity. When the cloud tries to disintegrate, gravity pulls them back, making them denser and denser until a region of condensing matter begins to heat up. When the temperature increases to a few million degrees, nuclear reaction starts at its core, fusing hydrogen into helium. Stars are giant nuclear reactors. At the core of a main sequence star like our sun, Energy equivalent to that of 15 billion nuclear bombs is produced every second. On the 30th of October 1961, Russians exploded the biggest thermonuclear bomb at the Russian Arctic Sea. This bomb was named the Tsar. It is the biggest explosive device mankind has ever constructed. It had an explosive force of 50 million tons of TNT and had the power to kill around 5.8 million people if it was dropped in a busy town. The heat of such powerful explosions at the core of a star produces enormous pressure that balances the powerful force of gravity that tries to collapse the star and this keeps the star alive. Over time, as the star consumes all of its hydrogen, the star starts to shrink. While the outer layer begins to expand and gets dissipated into space, and the star starts its journey towards its death. Stars die in two ways. While some face a gentle death, some others face a violent death. Stars can die either with a whisper or with a bang. How will our sun die eventually? Astronomers say that our sun will face a gentle death. It's almost halfway through its life. After about 5 billion years, when it consumes all of its hydrogen, a life giver like our sun will become a destroyer. But long before that, all life would have faced death. 
because of the increase in heat from the sun. When our sun runs out of hydrogen, it starts to fuse helium into carbon and oxygen while increasing in size to around 100 times. At that time, it will turn into a red giant star and over time, the super hot core shrinks and it will turn into a white dwarf star. A massive star, more massive than our sun, has a different story to tell. Such a star faces a violent death. When such a star runs out of its fuel, it starts to fuse carbon and oxygen into heavier and heavier elements and finally iron. When it starts to fuse iron, instead of producing energy, it starts to absorb energy and within a few seconds, the star explodes violently. The dying gasp of such a star is called a supernova. It's a spectacular and the most powerful explosion that you can ever imagine with the light coming out equivalent to that of 1000 of suns. Such an explosion ejects all of the iron and the heavier elements like carbon and calcium into the interstellar space. That's why Carl Sagan said, the nitrogen in our DNA, the calcium in our teeth, the iron in our blood, and the carbon in our apple pies were made in the interior of collapsing star. We are made of star stuff. We're made of star stuff. This statement is only partially true. We are much more than mere stuff. We have a mind to think and reason out, and a soul to love and admire the beauty, and to wonder why we came into existence on this planet. What happens to a star after a powerful supernova explosion? Such a star ends up in two different ways based on the mass of its surviving core. If the surviving core is less massive, it ends up as a neutron star. Such a neutron star can sometimes become a pulsar that rotates rapidly emitting regular pulses of strong radiation. On the 4th of July 1054 AD, astronomers across various countries reported an eye-catching event. They saw a brilliant beacon of light that blazed across the sky. It was visible for almost two years, shining so brightly that it could be seen even during the daytime. What our ancients saw was the supernova explosion of a giant star. The light from that explosion has traveled around 6,500 years to reach the Earth. The debris of that explosion is called the Crab Nebula and at the center of it lies the Crab Pulsar that is endlessly fascinating. It rotates almost 30 times per second sending out powerful beams more energetic than the medical x-rays. After a supernova explosion, if the surviving core is more massive, we get an interesting product. The huge gravity, because of the mass, crushes a core from a few million kilometers to a few kilometers in just a few seconds. This increases the temperature to around 100 billion degrees, blasting the outer layer into a supernova while crushing the core to a single point within a boundary called the event horizon. The black hole is now born. A few years back, ALMA radio telescope spotted a black hole around 100,000 times as massive as our sun in the heart of a super giant elliptical galaxy called Messier 87, around 55 million light years away from us. Astronomers started to build a network of telescopes spanning across various continents to picture that black hole. Finally, in April 2019, the event horizon of that black hole was pictured, which was earlier could be seen only in movies like Interstellar. Have you ever wondered how astronomers could picture a black hole that does not emit light? A black hole could literally light up the surroundings as long as it can gobble up the surrounding matter. The surrounding materials are either sucked into the black hole 
or flung away in a jet at nearly the speed of light by the powerful gravity of the black hole. The gravitational pull of a black hole is so strong that it not only bends the path of light, but it also keeps the light from escaping like a cosmic trap. That is why when you end up near a black hole, you will start moving faster and faster. And when you go past beyond the event horizon, you will be smashed into a point. If you are still alive, you can do a little bit of research to find out whether time is moving backwards in that black hole. Or you can meet Einstein there and ask him about backward time travel. But the problem is that you cannot write back home about your experiences. Can you see the power of gravity behind these cosmic events? Gravity is powerful enough to transform a meaningless soup of gas into a beautiful star. Gravity is also powerful enough to collapse that star into a beautiful supernova and turn it into the elements that are needed for life to exist. That is why Stephen Hawking says gravity could be called the hero of the universe. In his book, The Grand Design, he says, Because there are laws such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. Spontaneous creation is the reason there is something rather than nothing. It is why the universe exists, why we exist. It is not necessary to invoke God to light the blue touch paper and set the universe going. Do you agree with this statement? Let me give you an illustration. Right now, drones are impacting our society a lot. Right from fighting a war to tackling everything from disease control to search and rescue operations to delivering pizza and many more. Can a hiker who was rescued by a drone from a dangerous ledge on a mountain feel that the drone is the reason that he exists? Is it not more likely that there was a pre-existent intelligent being who programmed the drone to carry out the search and rescue operation? In the same way, can a blind force such as gravity bring about such an astonishing universe that I just described? Can a blind force be the hero of the universe? Or is there somebody behind it who brought that force into existence? Think about these two crucial questions until we meet again in the next episode. How did this one-time beginning come into picture? Who started it? Is it a product of time plus matter plus chance? Or is there an intelligent design involved?